Hi, uh, still with me, Andre. I'm your lecturer throughout um, these sessions of second week advanced uh, native mobile programming course. And in the second week, we talk about navigations. Okay, um, navigation is part of Jetpack. So what is Jetpack? Actually, Jetpack is just a collection of library, collection of tools and component and other things. And this library will help you to build a better applications. So uh, Jetpack is relatively new. In 2018, Google launched it. And it consists of different aspects, yeah? different aspects of um, programming in Android, such as architecture, user interface, behavior, foundation, and so on. And in second week here, we focusing on the navigation, which is uh, rel relatively new in Android programming development. Okay, so what is navigations? Uh, navigation refers to the interactions that allow user to navigate between screen across it uh, in your applications. So um, previously in a mobile application programming course or native course, um, you can achieve the same thing by implementing intent, which is you create intent and then you tell the Android studio to tell the Android environment uh, operating system to open up another activity. Okay, so we create intent to intentionally uh, open the, the other screen, the other activity, and uh, the screen is moving or navigate between the current screen to the new screen. Okay, we can achieve with uh, intent. Or if, if you work with fragments, for example, you have fragments and you want to swap, yeah, you want to replace the fragment, you need a, a fragment support manager to do that. Yeah, you can achieve the same thing. And uh, the, the drawbacks of this solution is you need to require beaver activity or fragment classes, and you need to manage um, the navigation interactions manually. Yeah. For example, um, when you want to swap the, the current fragment, you have to do it manually. And then, and and uh, same thing happen with uh, the activity. So you want to go back to previous screen. You have to finish. Yeah. You have to destroy the current activity, and uh, you you uh, you create the, the code manually, yeah. So um, Android uh, introduced to you a new a new way, yeah? a new way to navigate between screens, and it it use the the cool features of Jetpack, yeah. It, it it's part of Jetpack library. It's called navigation component. So uh, the Android Jetpack navigation component helps you implement navigation from just simple button clicks to move to move the other screens or more complex patterns such as using application bars or navigation drawer or using uh, most commonly used in application uh, nowadays is uh, button navigations yeah and we are going to see how easy to implement the navigation component and uh, by following the next tutorial so um, the navigation component consists of three key parts First is navigation graph, second is navigation host, and third is the navigation control. So what is navigation graphs? The navigation graphs is just a XML files that contains informations of your destinations, screens, and the actions. And the graph represents all your uh, app's navigation paths. So it's, it's represent the navigation flow from one screen or one fragment to another a fragment and it could be simple or complex. Okay, so uh, what it looks like, and this is one example of the navigation graph. So uh, you see here, we, uh, it has different fragments here, as you can see here one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, six fragments or destinations, and it connected with this arrow, yeah, this arrow called actions. So it means that the starting fragments can uh, reach the screen or the screen and the screens yeah, by indicating an arrow here, three arrow here, okay? So uh, this, this fragment only can go here, this fragment only can go here and so on and so on, okay? So this, uh, this is a uh, new features when you can draw, yeah, when you can put the destination and actions to indicate the navigation flow. Next, uh, the navigation host is uh, like a, a container 
where your fragment will be swept in, in and out and and it used to uh, use to navigate through your apps okay the navigation component is designed for apps that have one main activity with multiple fragment destinations which is single activity and multiple fragments and in case if your apps have multiple activity you need to uh, create separate navigation grab so it's individual navigation grab will uh, will be hosted on uh, an individual activity okay and finally you need navigation controller which is um minutes everything every uh, interaction every navigations within a navigation host and the navigation flow and this the destination is determined by the navigation graph and it controlled by this controller so um uh, basically uh like going forward or going back to the stack it's all dynamically and program you, of course programmatically you can uh, manually control that using navigation controller yeah it it, it has features to enable you to um, uh, control the flow of screens between one screen to another screens okay so uh, we can see this in actions in our uh, next tutorial which is uh, we are going to create a single activity and it has a multiple fragments okay so uh, before I continue, please create a new project, name it as advanced um, NRP pick two. Yeah, make sure you have this project names. Yeah, like this example, uh, just choose default settings. And yeah, this one is more important, most important. You need to integrate your project with your GitHub and you may use any repo URL, whatever you like, and make sure you invite me yeah in your repo yeah uh just uh invite scan campy to your repo that's that this is my uh, github account okay next um we begin our tutorials yeah after you finish the project we begin our tutorials uh we are going to create a simple yeah simple application which is consists of two screens yeah this main screens and uh, the game screens so uh, we can we only create one activity with two fragments and we create the navigation graph uh, to indicate that this fragment will can be go here and of course the, this fragment also can be go back here so uh, for, uh, uh, move move in and move out okay go in and go back okay um, let's begin our tutorial now okay uh, we have an empty activity. I just created a new project for this advanced native week second week two and first thing we do is the first step is we create two fragments so we can simply right click on the package name and then choose new and choose fragment blank okay we always start with blank and then the first fragment we created is main fragment which is the main fragment that will be launched on screens and from there we can go to other screens easily and you have you draw it with navigation graph okay and of course um it will create the fragment layout name here fragment underscore main just press finish button okay right so this is our fragments um we don't need this to do to do um string here and of course we doesn't need any variable here so i just block it and delete it and um, of course i don't need this of course i don't need on create in this case we don't need on create at all and we doesn't need this companion object so you can delete the component object so um, your fragment looks very simple it just contain one on create view and and the class declarations and constructor as it and now you can continue with uh, another fragment so we create a new fragment blank name it as game fragment press finish button right same thing here you delete unnecessary item here you delete the on create things 
And maybe you ask me why we need delete it all because uh, we are, are going to implement the navigation component instead of using uh, the fragment behavior like we do it, like we did in in um, mobile application course, which is we create navigation manager, sorry, fragment managers, and we'll, we pass bundle object to on create and so on. We don't, don't need that, okay? So I will show you uh, how the navigation component works. And for that, we simply create our uh, uh, fragments. Okay, uh, next steps, yeah. We are going to lay out, yeah, give a layout for each individual uh, fragment. So, um, what I'm creating here is a simple quiz game, yeah, mathematical equations, additional equations game. So, um, this main fragment's uh, functionality is to provide the main main menu for the user. User can enter the player names and and. Uh, start the games. So um, open the, the fragment main XML and you can delete the text view here. We no need, uh, doesn't need that. And of course, I am will I will work with the constant layout. So you just drag and drop one constant layout and then we put the uh, edit text. But in this case, I just need to put the, I want to use the text input layout, which is a kind of a material components, yeah, material components, yeah, of the text. If you drag it and drop it, you will see something like this. And don't be surprised that this actually consists of two things, yeah, two object, which is the first one is the text input layout object, and inside it, it it has the edit text, yeah, the actual edit text. So this one is just uh, like, like like a wrapper. So what you need to do is click on the text input layout and drag into the top and I'm going to set some distance like 200 dB here and um, uh, constraint to the left, constraint to the right, just like this. Okay, and then uh, create a, a margin, 32 dB, yeah. So in this case, um, I'm going to utilize the hint here. So you click the text input layout here and find out the hint, yep, change it to player name, enter, and we are going to add the hit animations, tick it to true, and we want to enable the hint, tick that true. And the actual edit text is the this one, the add text input edit text. So uh, it has default hint here, you need to delete it, delete the hint, and because this is the actual edit text that we want to access its it contents, so you need to rename the ID of this edit text to whatever you like. In this case, we want to name it as txt name, right? txt name. Okay, so um, I think that's all. And to start the game, a player need to click a button here. So I'm going to put the button and drag it to the left and consider it under it. And we set some distance, 32 dB on the right, and we name it as start, all right? So we start the game. So a player enter the player name and press start to start the game, which is uh, our app will navigate to the fragment game XML. So you open the fragment game XML, so we are going to design our layout here first things first is same thing as um fragment main we put the constraint layout in here and then we just need to put one text view constraint to the top set some distance 200 dp here and make it to the left make it to the right right and i make it to distribute to evenly right on the center of the screens and we change it the text to players turn okay players turn so um we are going to uh uh edit yeah rename yeah or change yeah change this text to whatever player names uh, entered in main fragments so for example andres turns just like that okay so uh, to make it uh better 
uh, clear clarity, we need to make it bold and change the stack size. Yeah, 18 SP, I guess. Okay, players turns. Okay, and I'm going to put a button here. Yeah, I'm going to put a button here. So uh, we are actually not create an actual game. We just want to play with navigation here. So um, I just put a button here, set ID of button back, and then refactors. And then, okay, I think that's all. It all, all, all we already have this, this um, constraint to the left, right, and top. And change the text on the button is um, back to the back. I'm going to add a little nice detail here. I want to add the icon back so we can quickly use the variables and right click on the variable or right click on the rest and new and choose the factor asset here. Factor asset and then click the Android icon. We're going to use uh, predefine or or uh, use existing icon provided by Intro Studio. So we find the back, the back arrow icon, this one. Okay, press OK, next, and finish. We are going to put this icon to the content of the button back. So we just need to search for icon, icon property. Okay, click on this little image here and choose the IC baseline arrow back. And it looks like this. So we have back button and it will go back to this fragment mains and in a fragment main when 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 you create uh, when you click the start it will go forward to um, game fragments okay all right i almost forgot that you need to set id for player turns here because we want to change it uh, within our Kotlin code. So we click that text and rename it as txt um, turn. Yeah, txt turn. Just refactor it and you're done for these uh, steps. Okay, uh, next step is um, we are creating our navigation graph. To do so, you need to create the XML or the new resource for the navigation graph. Uh, right click on the rest and new and click on the Android resource file, okay? So um, on the file name here, you type in the uh, game underscore navigations like this, or you can name it as you like. And for the resource type, you just pick the navigation here. So this kind of resource file is uh, using the resource type of navigations. Just press okay, and you will see this, um, at project dependency error occurred here. So uh, if you want to use navigation grab, you need to add the, this dependency. Yeah, okay. Um, just press okay, yeah. The project may not compile after adding this library, okay. Would you like to add them anyway? Yes, just press okay to uh, add this dependency and wait for uh, the Android Studio to download the, the necessary library, yeah, the navigation library and then after you after it's done, you will see this uh, the, uh, the user interface actually is similar like uh, uh, the the UI design view. It has property, it has component tree here, and also it has the place that you can uh, drag and drop the destination and also or also create the arrow or actions. Okay, but uh, before we continue, I need you to add more dependency before we. Uh, start drawing the navigation trap graph. Okay, so uh, we need to add more uh, one of two uh, uh, configurations on Gradle. So you open the Gradle script scripts here, and then choose the module. Yeah, build Gradle module. Double click it, and in the plugins here, you add the ID dot Android. I'm sorry. Uh, type in Kotlin min minus Android extensions. Okay, Kotlin min minus Android extensions. 
um, what is this? It's um, to enable to enable quick reference to your object, to your view object on layout within your codes. So without it, you need to type in the find view by ID yeah, or use the find view, view by ID mechanisms. And, and by using this, it will uh, speed out, speed up your uh, application development process. So um, we at this one, um, I'm actually wondering why this one is not uh, enabled by default. Yeah, in previous Android versions, it enabled by default. Yeah, but this one is you need to add manually. And remember to do this every time you create a project in this current version. I'm using, uh, wait a minute, I'm using the 411. Yeah, actually the latest one. So um, every time you create a new project, remember to add this plugin to enable the Android um, quick access, quick reverence to your view object within your Kotlin codes by simply call the ID. No need to use find view by ID, okay? So just press sync now, synchronize now, and wait for several minutes, for several seconds in, in this case. And we need uh, to add one more. Uh, Gradles, yeah, build Gradle here. Open the build Gradle projects and look for the dependency part. We we are going to add something here, and this one is quite long, so um, I encourage you to uh, copy paste it from the slides. Yeah, Control V here. So look at it. Uh, what is that? Or what is this? This one is another dependency uh, library of safe arguments. What is safe arguments? I will explain here a bit here after this. So uh, what you're going to do uh, first is just copy paste this one into the dependency part and get it from the slides. So uh, safe argument is a Gradle plugin that allows you to enter information into the navigation graph about the argument that you want to pass. And sometimes you need to to pass or to send variables or object from one fragment to another fragment, from one screen to another uh, screen. And safe arguments here is a library, it's a plugin that help you, yeah, it, it, it then generates code for you that handles the tedious bits of creating bundle for this argument and pulling those argument out of the bundle on the other side. So basically, these safe arguments will help you to create the bundle object and then uh, you can uh, just use it in your Kotlin codes. Yeah, so it's actually speed out, speed up uh, the development process, and it's a must plugin to have if you work with uh, navigations. Let's continue again. Okay, now we are going to um, back to the navigations um, graph. Yeah, navigation graph. So we still have empty screen here. So we first add our destinations. You just need to click this add destination here. And um, the first screen will show us up is this fragment main. Just click that. All right. So we have fragment main. You can drag it all uh, in other around or uh, in other directions, all directions, I mean. And of course, we add one other fragment, which is fragment game. So uh, it looks like this. So uh, this is. Uh, direction, two directions. So the main fragment will go to the game fragments. And to do so, uh, you need to create the actions, the arrow action. Look out, look, look for the small circle on the main fragment. You just need to drag it, drag it to the game fragment. So it, it will uh, produce a arrow, an arrow here. So it looks similar like when you work with the UI software like um, Figma or uh, XD, Adobe XD, and actually similar like that. So we create navigations between the main fragment to game fragments, and we use this small arrow. So before I continue, let's uh, address something here. So you click the main fragment here and uh, change the label. Uh, the label is uh, a text, a text that will Will be put on the title bar of your applications. We doesn't we don't want it shows fragmented document is because it's 
uh, it's not not good in it's not good for user so we change it to better uh, clear message yeah clear text title here so we change it to a main screen okay main screen we do same thing with the game fragments we change it to game screen the label, the label yeah okay okay now uh, you need to click the this arrow the small arrow here and you have to rename the ID, yeah? Rename the ID to action, action to game fragment, or you simply just say action game fragment. What is I, this ID means is um, I want to call the actions to load the game fragment. So action, the destinations. So that, that, that's a pattern, yeah? Action, destination. So, so what is the destination? The game fragment. Look at the arrow, yeah? It loads out the is not up the game fragments. So I renamed the ID as action game fragments. Okay, just refactor and you already have these applications. And next, um, I want to do the same thing for, for the game fragment, which is, as you can see here, we have the back button. Uh, look for the small circle of game fragment, click and drag and uh, point it to main fragments. So it will create this um, reverse arrow yeah, from the game fragment to the main fragments. Once again, you click this uh, reverse arrow from game fragment to main fragment. We rename the ID with the same patterns, actions, destination. So the destination is main fragments. So you need to type the frame fragments. So once again, this is uh, just the way we to understand, we remember uh, the, 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 the meaning behind this ID. So in if you have a better references or if you have better better uh, ID name, you can use that. Okay. So I think we is all for this navigation grab. It just creates a simple navigation grab uh, from main fragment to game fragment. In later on, a bigger project, probably you have a lot of screen here. You have a lot uh, arrow going back, going forward. Of course, one screen can go to several screens, yeah? And you have to remember that, you have to know that the navigation graph doesn't tell a lot of details about uh, the, the behavior or the actual small detail about uh, what happened when we click the button and so on. It doesn't tell us that. It just simply uh, tells, the, tells you that from this screen, it, goes, it can go to this screen and it doesn't tell which button that need to push from this one to that one because that, nav that navigation will be handled manually by Kotlin codes, okay? So this is our navigation graph. And remember, remember, yeah, uh, because we implement safe arguments, yeah, every time, every time you make a change on your navigation graph, whether you rename the ID or you add arrow, you drag, drag and drop another, a directions you need to rebuild the project why because um, when you do that uh, the android will create an, uh, necessary classes for this arrow yeah so it you can use that on on the kotlin code so every time you make a change on navigation grab do this click build and click the rebuild projects and wait for several seconds and you can continue your works All right, let's continue on. Um, okay, so um, we are going to create the uh, navigations. We are going to add the navigation codes. So when we click the start button, uh, the navigation the, will navigate from the main fragment to game fragment. So um, in that case, um, you open the main fragment first, okay, main fragment first. Remember, we already have this one, button start. So open the main fragments. Uh, we need to override a new thing. In previous mobile application programming course, uh, we do every logic in this on create view, right? So remember that you have to uh, return the view object here so we can use the view object with we'll find by view ID mechanism. And I will show you different ways to do so. So 
we need to override uh, on view created. So on view created. So what is that? This method will be called after the on create view finish its job. So remember, the on create view job main job is to load up the layout, uh, initialize the object inside the layout button, and so on and so on. So after it's done, it will call this on view created. It means that we can safely access the UI within the on view created without uh, using the view find by ID. So what I mean is you can simply just call the button. For example, button start. Remember, we are still in main fragment. So we can simply call the button. But oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Do I forget to name my, oh, I'm sorry. I forget to name my button here to button start. So let's do that. BDN start. Okay, refactors. That's it. And go to the main fragment. We can call it button start. Remember, um, this will uh this uh this mechanism or this this method will will works if you add what I call the gradles here. Remember, we already have this the Kotlin Android extensions plug in here. So therefore, we can access uh, a few object by call by simply calling its ID in our our Kotlin codes. Button start set on click listener. We choose the Lambda version. So what happened here? We called the listener from the button start. And we are going to call the navigations navigate method. So we call the navigations here. It's a global object dot find navigation controller. Remember, um, because we are in fragments, so like I said earlier that every navigation controlled by navigation control controller, yeah, which is not this fragment, but the main activity. But um, for simplicity, we can access the nav controller by calling find nav controller, and it requires you to put the view object. And remember the it here, it here represent the view object, and we can access it by calling the it here, okay? And the navigation find of controller already have reference to navigation controller. And then you we can continue to call the navigate action, the navigate method. And the navigated method required you to call the actions. It needs you to use which action that you want to use, this one or this one, right? This one or this one. So. In this case, from main fragment, we can go here by calling, yeah, calling this one. I don't know why my rendering broken here. Um, I'm going to find out later, but uh, I hope this one is not uh, affecting the, the emulator, yeah, my my running emulator, but it's okay, I think. Okay, so we're going to call this action, we action game fragment, yeah, to call the action game fragment here, and we create those, uh, for variable actions. And uh, as you can see here in game navigations, it, it, it's a part of a main fragment. So you can call the main fragment. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, OK, wait a minute. OK, it needs, it needs to call the main fragment direction, but it doesn't exist here because um, Oh, we need to rebuild the project. Okay, let's do that. Game navigation, let's rebuild the project. All right, let's take a look here. Do I have main, okay. Build, rebuild the project. Okay. You have to do that. If you, if you can find the main fragment direction class, you need to rebuild. All right, I'm sorry, guys. Um, I forgot what, uh, the previous steps. Now, um, oh, we leave it uh for for now yeah we leave it for now here so i forgot one things yeah after you create navigation grab uh you define the layout uh you you define the navigation flow next thing you need to do is to prepare the navigation pause a container that contain these fragments so 
uh, go to the layout here and open the activity main XML, which is this is the our activity, and it consists of hello words. Just delete the hello words and look for navigation host fragment here. Click, click and drop, click and drop here, and after you do that, it asks you which game navigation graph. I mean, which navigation graph that you want to use on this activity. So we pick the game navigation here, press OK, and it looks like this. And of course, because in the navigation graph, we define this one as our starter fragments. Why? I know that main fragment is starter. You can see this uh, small home icon here, which is indicate that this one is the starter. So in the navigation host, in the fragment main XML, it shows you the first fragments. I'm sorry, in I think I open out. Okay, this one. So remember, because this this object need to be constrained to other directions, to all directions, you can simply call click the fragment and click this infer constraint or magic one tools here, or you can use this constraint widget, whatever you like. And I I'm I'm going to use this magic one, click that one. Okay, it's automatically constrained to all the directions, all directions. Okay. So um, click on the that fragments, yeah, that the navigation was fragment. Rename the ID to uh, nav. Uh, sorry, host fragment, okay, or whatever you like. Just refactor it, and it's done. And click the build and rebuild project. Okay, guys, um, I think I forgot one important configurations that we need to add. So I need you to go back to build Gradle module app. Yeah, so we have these build Gradle projects. We already defined the save arcs arguments, okay? So it's not enough. So open the build Gradle module app and under the compile SDK and build tools versions, you paste this um, configurations, apply plugin. So we need to do apply the plugin of safe arguments into our gradles to make the um, the safe arguments plugin to works yeah in our navigation component so you can find this in in the more points okay click sync now button and wait for several um, several seconds and after you have done that um, uh, let's hope uh, the safe arguments works this time, so it can generate the, the necessary classes for this arrow. So we can try that by click build and rebuild project and wait for a few uh, seconds here. So we're creating this one and hopefully, hopefully safe arguments can generate the necessary class. And we can use that class to in our Kotlin codes to navigate. To do the navigation things, okay. Right, right. Um, after you done rebuild the project, check out on this um, the Java generated here, and look at the second package name here, and you will see the game fragment direction and main fragment direction, which which is this one is classes. This those two is uh. So, uh, our classes that generated by safe arguments. So we can use that classes in our main fragment. Let's go back here on the main fragment here. Let's um, uh, turn on the turn uh, delete the comment here. So we continue again with these actions. So we um, uh, we create the action variable here by simply call the main fragment C. You see the direction here because we already applied the safe arguments plugin and we can use that to call the, the actions, the, the arrow to call the arrow, the action game fragments, okay? So we call the action game fragment. So we use this action to our navigate here, navigate action here, okay? And let's try that, okay? I think that's it for our main fragment. We try that, we click the start, uh, the button start and See what happened, yeah. See what happened. So I'm going to pop up or run my emulator here. This one, okay. 
Uh, I will be back in few seconds when uh, the codes is running. Okay, um, it's launched, it's fine without error. So you see this fragment, the first fragment, and we click the start button here and it navigate to the action game fragment. It, it called the arrow, it called the navigation arrow here and it launched the game fragment. So uh, just like I said earlier that um, the, the navigation flow on the navigation graph doesn't refer to the actual button, yeah, the actual button start because we define it by uh, this one, yeah, these codes, okay? So we call it and that's it. We can navigate to start and next, we are going to do the same thing for the back button. So go to your game fragment here and we do the same thing. First, we override the on view created and we call the button back, yeah, button back dot set on click listener, just the lambda. And then we do the same thing navigations dot find nav controller it. We navigate to whatever we write in our variable actions, which is the, the game directions. If you see here, we um, in the in the navigation graph we use this game fragment here to call the the to call the arrow here the action frame fragment. So we we call the game fragments uh, directions and then after that we can access this arrow. Okay, so this arrow is uh, uh is belonging to game fragments. Okay, go to the game fragment and we can call the game fragment directions which is uh, created by our safe arguments plugin and then dot action main fragments. So we put this action variable here and I think that's it. Click the play again buttons and see what happened. Okay, uh, it launched well and let's click the start and now we can click this back button. It goes back to the first screens and we click again and it goes back to the second screen, means the game screens and, and so on and so forth. And the all back stacks uh, behind the screens, behind the backgrounds, it's handled automatically by navigation components. So when you click back, it will destroy the, the fragments, the game screen fragments, because it, uh, it's the topmost of back stacks and it shows the, the only fragments available on on the spec stacks next up on the step six we are going to implement the android back button your or the android soft back buttons and the navigation control handles the transitions and flow with it within your app and in this case we use the single activity multi fragments concept and we can we can add the soft android buttons is uh, you know that Android actually have two back buttons. The first is the hard Android back button, which is uh, it's actually a hard button that you can press on your smartphones and the, the actual soft buttons. Let me see this in here. This one is the hard button. And usually we see the soft action, soft back button it located on the upper left corner of the app screens. So um, how can we implement that? So uh, which means, if we in in not in in uh, the the currently one on the back stack, which is in the back stack, we still have uh, other fragments. We usually shows the the back buttons. Okay, so how to to uh, shows the back button and and uh, make it works in using our navigations components. Okay. Um, Let's go to the main activity, our main activity. Um, and because we want to implement our soft back buttons and make it work, first we need to have this navigation control object. We have to, re, uh, we have to initialize this object. Therefore, we can uh, access the method to create the soft or to implement the soft back button. So first, let's create the variable, the private var uh, nav controller and we apply the navigations 
controller like this. And one thing is um, we, we don't want to create a null for, variable for this. So we apply the lit init uh, keywords, yeah? Okay, let's, I think I have wrong class right here, nav controller, yeah, nav controller is the, the actual things. So uh, what is lit init, yeah? Without lit init, you have to initialize directly your navigation control object. Let's delete the navigation controller. Uh, sorry, let's delete the lit init. You see this error, which is you have to equals to something on it, initialize it, or you can simply set it null, and using question marks here to indicate, uh, indicate that this object is nullable. However, I don't want to do that. Yeah, I, I don't have to do that. So I can apply the lit init to tell the Android that uh, I'm sure that navigation control is not null. And, um, and I don't want to set that as a null variable because if I do so, if I set it as null, Therefore, I need to um, check whether it's null or not in throughout my codes, you know, using question marks and so on and so on, or double exclamation mark to check whether the, the variable null or not. Okay, so you can simply use let init in front of var navigation control. Uh, one thing to remember that you is you use the let init if you sure that this object never null. Yeah, never null. Okay, let's continue. Uh, next one, All right? We initialize this one in our on create nav controller equals navigations dot find nav controller, and we initialize it by um, refer or use the uh, navigation host, which is called by our main activity, see here, the host fragment, this one, this, this is called this navigation host. So to initialize the navigation control, we need to specify, uh, specify the navigation host ID. So we called it r.id r nav, uh, sorry, host fragment, okay? So uh, by uh, calling this uh, find navigation control method, we already initialized the nav uh, controller, okay. Next, um, in a mobile application programming course, we uh, use toolbar or supporting toolbar to replace the action bar with our toolbar and we can put the, the home icon, back button and so on. But in this case, in this uh, navigation way, we can do that by calling the navigations UI dot uh, set up action bar with nav controller. So we replace this action bar with our nav controller. So let's the navigation control handle the action bar or the toolbar. So in this case, the first one is use this and second one is a nav controller, the, the second parameter. So, oh, wait a minute, nav controller, all right. That's, that. That's it. So um, this code tells the Android that let navigation controller handles the action bar. In in uh, previous courses, we use toolbar, yeah, to replace the action bar. But in this case, we use the navigation controller. Okay. Next, uh, we need to uh, overwrite uh, on support navigate up on support navigate up, yeah, okay. So on support navigate up is a call to whenever you click uh, something on the on the top left corner of screens and it whatever it shows up like probably it shows like a uh, back arrow buttons or hamburger icon and so on and so on. But in this case, um, because we support the navigate up, you know, navigate up is going up to the back stack, yeah, going going up to the back stack. And in this case, we can use this uh, navigations ui.navigate up and use the nav controller, right? 
Okay, navigate up, navigate con nav controller. And the second parameter is uh, you can use draw drawer, navigation drawer. You know, if you remember in material design classes, courses, and uh, topics, yeah, uh, we can create drawer that um, in that consists of the, the menus, yeah, menus of our applications that that hide off the screens. When you, we click that button, it shows up from left to the center, and we pick and we can pick the menu on it. You can specify the ID here or the object here, but we don't have it in now currently, so we just simply call null here, right? Just call null. Okay, open up a layout. So um, of course you can use this to um, to set the back button or open the menu, whatever you like. If you have it, you can use this. Okay, so uh, it's it's like uh, the navigate app is multi multi functions that handles those things at once. All right. This navigate app will return true or false. So we simply call return to prevent error occurred here. And I think I think that's it. Yeah. I think that's it we need to do because everything will handle by navigation controller. So we just try, uh, need to test it, play it and see what happened. Okay, it launched well and you see this first fragments on screens. When we click the start, means that our backstage now consists of two things, the first main screen and the, the new fragments, the game screens. In that case, uh, we can see this navigate up button here, navigate up button here, and we click that one, it do the same thing, yeah? It destroy the fragment, it go back to the uh, previous fragment on the backstage. Of course, it uh, it's uh, it's do the same thing with this button here yeah, back. Okay, so try that. Okay, um, one thing uh, that is not yet implemented is uh, the player names. Yeah, the data of the player name. So what uh, what I want is when I click the start button, I also want to send the player names data to the game fragments okay so how do we do that first we need to specify that the game fragment can receive the bundle arguments yeah the arguments or the variable can receive variable so the game fragment actually expected to receive the argument from other fragments in this case from the main fragment so to add the arguments, to add the variables, and uh, you need to click the game fragments here. And on the property here, you click the argument here and it shows nothing, yeah, because we doesn't have it yet. So click on the plus icon here and it shows the add arguments, a model, it's just on screens. You click the name for the arguments. You can, um, uh, for instance, we can create player name arguments yeah for the type here we just strings all right strings and click add of course you can uh take the null label means that uh it's nullable it can be null or or not of course you can set the default value for it so just press add okay the player name string created here remember every time you change something on navigation grab don't forget to rebuild your projects Okay, just wait a few seconds. After you're done building, um, we have error here because it tells you that a no value passed for parameter player names. We are to fix that. And this, this error is a uh, point out on our action game fragments. So uh, the action game fragment, if you hover it, and now expect this constructor expect one variable, as you can see here, the player names okay so we can get player name through the edit text remember in our um fragment main we have this edit text player name the, the xd name we can get it and put it in this uh constructor so we start with create the full player name strings equals okay what uh i think i need to update my intro studio for uh, 4.1.2 available right now, you can update it if you want. And uh, txt name dot text dot to string. 
and we put the player names in our constructor here and uh, and it's it's now not error yeah the error is gone and the next one uh, how can we read it yeah how can we read this player names and put it in our game fragment which is we are going to put in our uh, text view in the game fragments uh, like uh, Andre's turns or uh, whatever turns in it okay this one yeah uh, already have the ID the extra turn so we open the game fragment here and we expect the value we expect the player names up here and how can we read it uh, just like I said that uh, this FR, safe arguments plugin uh, uh, help you to to uh, to create a class for arguments and create a bundle for you. So you just need to send it and receive it and use that in codes. In this case, we can read the player names arguments by simply call arguments here in our on view created. I'm in the game fragment actually. The arguments. Okay, and and you can uh, click dot here. Sorry, what I mean is uh, we check first if the arguments is not null equals null here, and then we can read it. Play your name. We prepare the variable and game fragment. As you can see here, we have three class, the game fragment itself, the game fragment directions, if you want to navigate, and of course the game fragment arguments, which is all created by the save argument for us. So we click that one and from bundle, okay, from bundle. So, and we call the required arguments here, okay. And when we dot it, we get the player names, okay. We have the player name. And finally, uh, we can use this text. Yeah, we can use this tag to change the text return text into the dollar player names turn. Yeah, that's that. Okay. And yeah, I think that's it. Um, there's another another um another way to. To write these codes, uh, please check out the slide, my PowerPoints. There is a, a simple way or a less to code if you use, use the alternatives programs in my slides. Yeah, check that out and let's let's play it. Okay, and let's see if it works or not. All right, um, let's uh, type a name here for the player name. So let's say Andre here and then start the game and you see these variables. Uh, the arguments uh, can read it and it's it's called Andre, it's right Andre's turns. Okay. It works fine, right? So um finally, yeah, one last thing that I want to you to know that in the navigation grab you can change the transitions animations, yeah, the transition animations. And uh, how to change it? Click on the fragments, for example, the game fragment, look for the, um, sorry, let's take a look here. I'm sorry, not, not the game fragment, but this one, yeah. This arrow, yeah, the, the, the arrow here, which is from main fragment to game fragment or this arrow, whatever you like. So as you can see, we can define or change the default animations and look for the enter anim and the exit anim. So the enter anim, you can uh, indicate that uh, the animation that will launch if you load up the game fragments and the exit anim will be launched if you uh, close the game fragments. Yeah. So to change the default fragment, you just need to click this little button here and then you can choose whatever animation that you like uh, the default one of course it has also uh, have this one of or you can use the fragment exit fragment path enter and so on and so on so let's say uh, we want to use the sliding left here and 
for the exit animation, we can use the uh, slide. <laughs> we don't, don't have it. Slide in left, slide out right. Yeah, slide out right, the opposite one. I don't know if it work or not, but let's try this out. Okay, let's uh, write something here. Wait, um, and then press the start. Yeah, you see the, the animations, yeah? Okay, let's try that again. Yeah, see these animations, okay? Okay, for the homeworks, yeah? You need to work on this uh, uh, with the same project, yeah? With the same repo. And what you need to do is uh, on, the, on the game fragments, you need to adjust the layout to, uh, like this reverence, uh, it has two text view with the plus mark here. And you add the edit text or text input layout. And then uh, the answer, your answer here is uh, the hint variables and the submit answer button, okay? Submit answer button. Um, the logic here is, is that uh, the user must must solve the equations, yeah? You must solve the equation and type in the answer in this text, edit text. And when the user correct, uh, you should have received the one points and it's sum up, yeah? The point is sum up, one, two, three, and so on and so on. But if user answer incorrectly, yeah? The games ends immediately, yeah? The games end immediately and uh, it navigate to the result fragment. So you need to create another fragment, result fragments, and show the score in here, the X marks, uh, which is uh, a total score received by the users. And there is a back to main screen button. If you click this, you go back to the main fragment, okay? If you have any questions, you can ask me directly and of course, uh, this homework must be done in one week timeline and submit your works. And what you need to do is just write your GitHub repo that contains the project to ULS. And don't forget to add me. Scan can be my GitHub account because I want to clone your projects and to, to assess your um, understanding, assess your, your works, okay? Um, once again, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you can drop me email here and I would like gladly to ask to answer your questions. Thank you very much.